To find out who our next guest is, I hand you over to the beautiful Fred Cook. Well, Tommy Tiernan, our next surprise guest is Sheikh Dr. Umar Al Qadri. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Was, was that an inappropriate cultural gesture? In Islam, yes. <laughs> All right, okay. Uh, now. Yes. <laughs> it's okay. It's so, okay. I get to explain the hat would be the first one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, well, the hat is basically just so you know that I'm an imam, that I'm, a, I'm one of the leaders of the Muslim faith. That's it. In, in Ireland? Is in that... Ireland, yes. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And you're not on your own. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that must be fascinating. Can you tell us how you came to Ireland? Uh, well, I came to Ireland as an immigrant, of course. Um, I am a first-generation immigrant in Ireland. I used to be a second-generation immigrant in the Netherlands. Okay. I was brought up in the Netherlands. I lived yeah. all my life in the Netherlands. I, I travelled to Pakistan at the age of 15. Uh, to study theology, Islamic studies and sciences. Yeah. And after my studies, I then moved to Ireland in 2003, so I've been here for a while now. Um, what does an imam do? Well, I'm not just an imam. It would have been very easy for me if I was just an imam. I happen to be the chair of the Irish Muslim Peace and Integration Council, which is a national representative body of Muslims in Ireland yeah. that promotes peace and integration. Okay. Um, I happen to be, as I said, Imam of the Islamic Center of Ireland. Um, I'm also uh, studying intercultural st uh, studies and interreligious sciences. Um, I, on top of that, I am also a quality assurance director of a halal certification body. But most importantly, I am a father uh, of three children, a husband of my well, beautiful good, wife. Well, because the, the first list of things didn't sound like an awful lot of crack. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes. I've often... Um, in the, in the way that, <clears throat> in the way that when Christianity came to Ireland, uh, it had to become an Irish Christianity. You know, it had to, in order to uh, to blossom here, um, it had to. I don't know if "just" is is the right word, and I would be someone who hopes that Islam blossoms in Ireland. In what ways do you think that Islam needs to adjust, or does it have to adjust in order to bloom here? Sure. Well, first of all, Islam is, uh, is, is a religion of almost two billion people in the world. Not all are Arabs, not all are South Asians. Yeah. Islam is a religion of people from various diverse backgrounds. Yeah. And wherever it, it traveled or whatever Islam, the message of Islam reached, one of the things that this religion has, it has the flexibility to adopt. So it can adopt to certain cultures, certain yeah. traditions. However, in the Irish context, uh, there are so many things that are so you know, common between Islam and Irish culture. When we look at the family values, for example, yeah. they are very, very similar. Uh, when we look at the reverence uh, for religion, particularly for the church and, and Christianity, very similar to Islam's position to Christianity. Islam has always been very tolerant, very accepting towards the Christian faith. So, so just ex explain to me how... Because you talk about Irish people very connected to Christianity. I suppose historically... Historically, yes. We were, I think we're going through a the birth pangs of uh, something different now. Um, so maybe we're not as connected to our church as we used to be. You, you must see I that. agree, I agree, I absolutely agree. And, and uh, when I, for example, did a bit of research about you, I found out about your uh, you know, experience uh, lately with going back to the church and you know, yeah. attending ceremonies while you've been away from it for a long time. And yeah. not only you, and I think that uh, that is an experience that a lot of people are going through in Ireland. There are many reasons for that, of course. I mean, how, for example, the experience had been with the church, with the hierarchy, etc. But I think what we need to do is we need to focus on the positivity. We need to focus on the positive things 
of the faith. Of course, there are negative things. Even when you look at the Muslim faith, when you look at Islam, for example, yeah. we are in the media portrayed as uh, you know, terrorists and extremists because of a small minority of extremists. And that experience, unfortunately, Anand has had as well, where uh, a minority of the Catholic Church did certain things and, and the response is that a lot of people, they, they, you know, they said, hold on, this is not something that we want to do. But they have to understand that those people you know, do not represent the church, sure. do not represent all Christians and all Catholics. Can you tell me two things I, I, I thought of there while you were talking. One was, um, can you tell me about your love for the prophet? Is that, I mean, I'm very, you know, I'm not Islamic, so, you know, and I'm also by trade someone who uh, maybe doesn't. <laughs> well, you've, you've, done, you've done the research, so. Uh, you're, you're... <laughs> I've listened to you talking about, you know, religion and talking about Jesus, for example. Yeah, so yes. I, I guess what, what the, the great thing about Irish Christianity is that it can take a joke. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> So where does Islam stand on the whole sense of humor thing? <laughs> well, <laughs> well, the thing is that, um, you know, Islam has been um, very, very open to dialogue, has been very open to criticism, uh, particularly in the early centuries of Islam. Um, but unfortunately, the past few centuries, particularly the past century or two, yeah. um, that is not the case. Now, the prophet of Islam is, is, is a central figure to Muslims. I mean, we obviously adore him, we love him, we honor him and respect him. I mean, when I look back at the Prophet Muhammad, I, I see that he used to be insulted, yet he never punished anybody for the insults. And now I see Muslims, uh, when caricatures were made, for example, in Denmark a few years ago or in France, uh, certain people that claim to be Muslims responded in a way that Prophet Muhammad would never have responded. And, and I think it is important to differentiate the, the actions of certain Muslims uh, with the actions of the Prophet Muhammad. One of um, the most beautiful things I've ever heard in my life, I was doing uh, a gig out in Dubai. And um, because of the jet lag and stuff, I was awake at dawn. The city was in dusk, or you know, that kind of half light. Yes. And I heard the Muslim call to prayer. And it was one of the most beautiful things I have ever heard in my life. It was, I didn't obviously understand a word of it, but it seemed full of so much soul. And I was wondering, would you be able to sing something for us now from your tradition. Absolutely. Well, let me recite a verse of the Quran, which is kind of very similar to, to the azan, the call to prayer. You're not going to blow up now after they say it. <laughs> no, definitely not. <laughs> the fast, the fast majority. <laughs> it's, oh, don't worry. The no, no, hey, hey, come on, come on. <laughs> The vast majority of Muslims is absolutely peaceful, believe me. <laughs> and, and those lunatics do not represent the Muslim yeah, faith. And I obviously but wouldn't have said that to you unless I suspected you had a sense of humour. <laughs> yes, 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 that's right. <laughs> that's it. So. A'uzu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajeem. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد are you aware of uh, Muslims in Ireland encountering problems in Ireland? Absolutely. Unfortunately, one of the major challenges that Muslims have throughout uh, the Western world, uh, particularly um, now, is uh, the challenge of Islamophobia, the worrying increase of Islamophobia. Yeah. Um, 
in Ireland, for example, there has been an academic who, in Limerick University, Dr. James Carr, did a research on Islamophobia experiences in Ireland. And I must say that Ireland is one of the most friendliest countries in Europe. The Irish nation... Uh, the Irish experience is one of the best experiences of Muslims in Ireland and of all communities. And of course, there is a historical context and reason for that, that the Irish themselves felt and, and were treated the same way as Muslims now are treated. Sure. In, in 70s and 80s, when Irish people traveled to London, for example, yeah. uh, they, they had to be, they were stopped and searched. And the same thing applies now for many Muslims. Um, and I think that the worrying increase, as I said, is Islamophobia. There seem to be um, an increase in attacks and the physical assaults on Muslims. Uh, some of the women, for example, they have had their hijabs taken out, pulled from their heads. Uh, teachers, uh, sorry, uh, an imam in Cork, he, in Ramadan last year, was with his wife uh, for after the mosque, after the prayers, going back to his home, and he was physically assaulted on his way back. This happened in Cork uh, in Ramadan a few months ago. So there are a lot of uh, you know, such incidents that are sl uh, slowly increasing, they're worryingly increasing. So it is a difficult time. So the challenge that we are facing is uh, the increase of Islamophobia. I suppose, you know, because I'm probably not informed enough, um, and um, and maybe this is a, a, the start of an argument that we'll never be able to finish. Uh, it does seem to Irish people, or maybe to Irish women that I know, that Islam mightn't be the most progressive religion in terms of empowering, allowing, dignifying, respecting women. I think that is a wrong perception. Sure. Because when we look at the first university in the world, that was a Moroccan university that was established by a lady called Fatima, the al qarawiyin University. The wife of the Prophet Muhammad, Aisha, was a teacher to thousands and thousands of his companions. And she used to, 1400 years ago, uh, travel on a camel. And it is a pity that, for example, we have countries uh, like Saudi Arabia, where women weren't allowed to drive and still aren't, but hopefully yeah. soon they will be. Um, and sometimes people assume that maybe what happens in Saudi Arabia or in Afghanistan represents the Muslim faith. It doesn't. We, Pakistan, where my parents are from, has had twice uh, a lady as the prime minister. That's right. Yeah. Benazir Bhutto, the That's late right, Benazir yeah. Bhutto. If Islam was truly uh, not, uh, you know, empowering women, then how do we explain that women had a very active role and still have a very active role in various different Muslim majority countries? And do not just look at Saudi Arabia or Afghanistan. Sure. I mean, they are the worst examples. And yeah. there are a lot of Muslims that would say, well, do not look at f to, sa to these countries as an example because they do not really represent the, the, the Muslim well, hopefully faith. in years to come, instead of saying, look at the Muslim women in uh, Afghanistan and Saudi Arabia, we'll be able to say, look at them in Dundalk and Belmullet. Well, you can look, uh, at, them, you can look at them actually now. Yeah. There, are lo there are dozens of Muslim women, if not hundreds, that are actually working in Ireland with their hijab on. Sometimes Muslim women do not wear a hijab do not wear the scarf. It doesn't mean they're not a Muslim. They're still Muslim. Yeah. So you can't really always identify a Muslim woman. But there are hundreds of uh, medical doctors, professionals, course, yeah. nurses working in Ireland, in, in Mayo, in Galway, you, call, yeah. you name it, uh, that are already you know, participating in public life here. Um, when you said a, a few moments ago that Ireland was one of the friendliest places uh, in the world for Muslims to be. I, I mean, I felt, um, uh, I can't really properly define it, but I felt proud and uh, glad that that was your experience in our country. Uh, so thank you so much uh, so for coming on to the show. It's been a really, really good pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Sheikh Dr. Umar Al-Qadri.